How are we going everybody? I thought I'd do a quick demonstration on grafting and budding citrus trees as we're kicking into the season for it because you can see the new growth coming on. This is an orange. What is it? Uh, summer navel. We've got plenty of flower, beautiful lush green leaf on it. That lemon tree before you come over here, this lemon tree, I've just realised why it's going backwards. It's been ring barked at the base here. It's been copped hard so I'm going to have to put a guard around this and hopefully I can bring it back to life. But there's not enough sap flow coming through to the plant on top because there's only this small section here. If you look around this side here, all the bark's gone off and that's causing it to really struggle with the sap flow. I'm just going to get rid of these thorns on it because they're really sharp. And that's a sign when the tree starts producing another thing with a lemon tree, if you start seeing a lot of spines on it, that's because of the stress it's going through. The more of these spines you see on the tree developing, the more acidic the soil is and the more stress the tree is going through. So we're going to have to work on this one here. I'm going to have to uh, paint that over, clean it up and put a ring around that, a bit of mesh to stop the rabbits from getting back to it and give it a good feed. But anyway, I'll deal with that later on. There's an orange tree there. That's a Washington navel. And over here I've got the uh, summer navel. What I'm going to do is demonstrate how to do a bud graft on the side of that. So I'm going to cross these over. I'm going to take a sample off this and what we need for a bud sample is where the leaf node is. We don't need a bud in actual fact, we just need where a leaf is growing off a branch. But for example here, there are different age branches. This has got to be at least nine months old. You don't want it any younger than that. You want it about pencil thickness. Now, this, see this one here? Plenty of flowers, fantastic. All those flowers are going to fall off. You'd be lucky if it holds one or two or three on this little branch. But this little branch is so small, it's triangular formation still. It's no good to take a sample off. Whereas up here, you can see this is a, a, an older branch. It's a little bit thicker, almost as thick as a pencil. Ideally, we want to go down here. See down there? That's a nice place to take a sample off. But it's way too close to the trunk at the moment meaning the tree is still very young. We haven't got enough uh, larger branches on it further away, although we have one just here. Look at that there. Now that's growing straight up. I haven't pruned these plants yet. Again, weather conditions has really changed the formation and shape of this tree. It's all leaning that way because the bloody wind is always blowing. I thought I found a nice sort of quiet spot on this property, but obviously I haven't. Well, we're just going to persist with that. So what I'm going to do is take yeah, I am going to remove this side for the purpose of the demonstration as well. Which branch? We want that one there, we want that one there. Let me have a close look at this. This whole thing should come off, but I'm not going to take it all off at the moment. Or will I? Actually, I'll just take this one here off for now. Now, one thing we've got to consider when we're taking samples off is the time of year. It's a little bit early now. I'm only doing it so you can learn how to do it and get yourself ready for it. You need the flowers to actually bloom, finish, and then wait for the new growth to come on. Because at the moment, all the uh, all the little nodes that we he have here between the leaves and that, that is, are be all becoming flowers. So you don't want to graft onto the tree while it's pushing up its flowers, but rather straight after it. So straight after that, you'll see all the new growth coming on. Look, there's no harm in trying now, as I'm going to do it now. Let's hope it does take. Uh, what we need here are tools. Now. I've got the Lowe's Bypass Secateur here. I thought I'd quickly show you this. Now these are the top of the range products, the Lowe's or Lowe's. What I've also got here, and I've showed you this recently, is a uh, rice uh, Secateur, which is really good. I actually was quite surprised for the price that it is, how good it is and how accurate and clean it is as far as the cutting is concerned and the quality of the steel. Now I'm, you can use either. Look, if you're a, a, a person who prunes regularly, Go get yourself a top quality pair of secateurs like Lowe's or Bypass or Anvil. Uh, but if it's something you just do on the occasion, there's nothing wrong with a rice set and you get, to, you get a little pouch and a grafting tool with it as well. Sorry, a sharpening tool. That's this one here and you can actually use it on, your, on all your tools. Just a couple of scrapes like that. Let me hold it right. Always hold it this way. One, two, three is all you need to do. And you can do both sides if you like. Just give it a little wipe so you haven't got any burrs on there. Now we've cut that off but what we're going to do here is take a bud sample. Now I've shown in the past using where are my budding knives and grafting knives. Again two sets, top quality and your average 
you know, everyday run of the mill graft and budding knife. Absolutely nothing wrong with it if it's something you're going to do on the occasion, not every day as a profession. So I'll use this one here today. This is our graft and budding knife which works just as well and it is a flat side blade so that's the flat side blade and the other side's tapered a little bit so you never cut with the tapered side down always with the flat side down what we need to do here is take a bud now I'm going to take this one here now I need to take a little bit of the cambium layer as well so we're going to start a little bit above about five centimeters maybe up to ten centimeters above and we're going to cut towards the bud and try and get underneath it and the blade must be sharp and I'm just going to rock and roll it rather than pulling it too hard there we are we've just gone past it see what I've got there now it wants to go further in that's okay we can go further in if we want to but what we do is hold the top part down and try and slide back up but if it doesn't want to curve back up because it's starting to split have a look at that see how it's splitting there I haven't even gone down that far. Simply take your blade out, turn it around, and carefully cut into there, not to cut yourself as well. Then we've done the cut there. Okay, we've got the white wood underneath, which is what we want, along with the cambium layer. Avoid touching the open side or the cambium layer. No, 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 not now. Come on. Now, what we do over here is get our pruning tool, clean these spines off like that. Now I'm going to graft it on the south side here folks because on the north side with all the wind we're getting I'm concerned it may dry it out. I'm just concerned actually no I'll just do it over here. You need to find the flat spot anyway so here we're facing west but we've got plenty of afternoon protection from trees. Look, come in, let me come around here. So what we need to do now what I do here is cut a T, capital T, actually it's the H on its side, the letter H, capital H on its side. So two horizontal cuts, but no longer than what this is. So see the length of that? So eye that off, you can use a tape measure if you like, or a ruler, and you've got to cut it a little bit shorter than what that is. Okay, so I'm going to have a go at this and say it's there, and it should cut quite easily, and about there. Okay. So they're the two horizontals. Now I'm going to do the vertical cut down the center, like that. And using the back side of the blade, see this little bit here? This is your peeler. You can run it in there, and if it's got sap flowing through, it should peel off real easy. Don't mind the puppies. No, no, don't lick my face. Not now, not now, not now, not now. This is not the time, seriously. Okay, all right, not you too. Wow, okay. Timing, eh? No, go. Get out. Get out. I've got rid of the puppies, folks, so hopefully they don't misbehave anymore. So we've pulled the one side, as you can see. Now we're going to pull the other side. Just run it underneath carefully. There we are. Like that. See the barn doors? That's what we want. Oop, just get that piece out of the way. Now we need to insert our bud. Now make sure it's facing the right way up and we drop it in there. Oh, quickly, I'm handling it too much. So we're inserting it under the flaps on both sides, the bud's in the middle, and you can see it's overhanging on top and overhanging at the bottom. Just hold it in place and line your cut, your blade with the top cut, get rid of that, push that in, or is it in there? Sorry folks, I can't see what I'm doing here, I've got to put my glasses on. Here we are, wow, that's a mess. <laughs> All right, so that's in line at the top there. Now we're gonna do the same with the bottom half. Line up the cut and carefully press. So my, my finger's in the way, I know. There, see, just cut it off, and that should press into the bottom half there, neatly. So we're trying to get the sap to flow from the bottom all the way to the top. And now I'm using the biotape. You can, can use the buddy tape, but the biotape is just as soft and easy to apply. Around the bottom, around the top to start, go with. Is that in there? Yep, that's in. And always check it as you're doing it because it might move a little bit, dislodge a little bit, and you don't want that to happen. See how soft that is? It cuts off. So this does give as the plant starts to push up its bud. But you can cover the bud as well just to stop it from drying out too much. Like that there, folks. Self-adhesive so you don't have to tie it up or anything. Just going to put a couple of more layers around it just to make sure it's nice and covered on top especially. And there we are. 
cut it off, sealed, let it go. Now just monitor that every day, well not every day, maybe once a week, make sure it's okay. You don't have to take it off, as soon as you see a little bit of bud swell, you may want to cut off the uh, buddy tape or the bio tape that we have and re-tape it up again and to allow the bud to burst through. Now that's bud grafting a citrus. Now if you want to learn how to do other types of grafting, we've done plenty of videos in the past on grafting using the Italian grafting tool, for example this one here. Uh, there's also the uh, uh, the crown grafting tool that we have and a well card grafting tool as, along with all the bud grafts and grafting knives that we have. Lots of videos, we'll put some links there in the description so you can click on that and see how it's done. Get ready to start grafting your citrus if you want multiple citrus fruit on your trees so you can enjoy you know, a bountiful crop coming out of the one tree. Always remember to graft onto a larger tree, meaning whichever the variety you have in your garden, don't graft a lemon tree for argument's sake onto an orange tree or a mandarin tree, you do it the other way around. So the lemon tree should always be your rootstock plant that you graft onto rather than the other way around. The reason being is that the lemon graft itself will grow way too big for a small tree that's like a mandarin. So you'll end up having this top heavy tree that'll cause the tree to fall over or snap off. So check out the grafting varieties that we have in the link and check out our website so VasilisGarden.com. I know the sales are finished, but it is spring now, so we've got some new stuff coming online. Uh, Black Grid is going to be discounted shortly again for you to enjoy. So check it all out, VasilisGarden.com. In the meantime, have a wonderful garden and a wonderful day. From me, Vasili, Maresi.